Let's look at the problem. Find the equation of the sphere, center at the point, minus 4, 2, 3. Tangent to the plane, 2x minus y minus 2z equals minus 7. Now, first thing I should do, we write down the equation of the sphere. We figure out what we're given and what we need. So if I'm given okay, a sphere with center x0, y0, z0, and radius r, the equation is given by x minus x0 squared plus y minus y0 squared plus z minus z0 squared equals r squared. So what I have here is the set of all points, distance r from the point x0, y0, z0. Okay, if we take all those points, that gives us a sphere. Now, we're given the center, so we're looking for the radius. Now, if I go through the problem again, it's not clear how to get the radius from the information given. So we're gonna to have to figure out how to make use of this business of tangent to this plane. For that, we should draw the picture. Now, we draw a sphere. I'm gonna draw a plane tangent to our sphere at some point. And as drawn, it's not very useful, but if we rotate our picture so that the plane is perpendicular to my blackboard, like so, we can make some sense of this. So you'll note what's happening here. Well, the radius is gonna be the shortest distance from our center to this plane. So that's what we're looking for. We're really trying to solve the problem, find the shortest distance from the point minus four, two, three, to the plane two x minus y minus two z equals minus seven. And we have two methods for doing that. For our first method, we compute r as the absolute value of the component of a vector v in the direction of another vector u. So recall, if we have two vectors u and v, okay, suppose they span a plane, then I can write v as the sum of a vector parallel to u and a vector perpendicular to u. Then I want to write the parallel part as a product of a length times a direction. So by direction, we mean a unit vector, so a vector that has length one. It might turn out that u is not a unit vector. It's not a problem. I get a unit vector in the same direction as u if we divide by the length of u. Then what's left over is what we're gonna call the component of v in the direction of u. So that's just gonna be the length of the parallel part in the u direction. Now, it's not a length proper because it could take on negative values, but if we have a minus sign, that just means u parallel is just pointed in the opposite direction of u. So if you want a proper length, you just drop the minus sign. Now, note, if we take the length of parallel part to u, what happens? Well, we have a number times a vector. If we take the length of this vector, okay, it's a unit vector, so it has length one. The number, we just take the absolute value of. So we're gonna have that the length of the parallel part in the direction of u is just given by this formula here. And so that's gonna be our radius. Now, how do we find u and v? We look at the picture. So for u, I'm looking for a direction that's perpendicular to the plane. So we're looking for a normal direction to the plane. We look at the equation. If our equation's in this form, we get a normal direction by just peeling off the coefficients of x, y, and z. So we'll use u equal to two minus one minus two. For v, I can use any vector that starts at the center of the sphere and ends on the plane. So you'll note if I take any vector of this form, the direction that's parallel to u is always gonna be this segment here. So with that freedom, let's let x be equal to zero, z be equal to zero, it gives me y equals seven. So I have the point zero, seven, zero on the plane. I form my vector v by taking the difference of our point with the center. We get our vector v. Now we just put our vectors into our formula. So we take the dot product of these two vectors, we get eight minus five plus six, which is nine. The length of u is three. Okay, we don't need to take the absolute value because we have a positive number, which is three. 
So my radius is three. Then I could put our radius into our equation to get the equation of our sphere.